Go ahead. Okay. Our mission, Helping Parents Heal is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents to become shining light parents by providing support and resources to aid in the healing process. We go a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and evidence for the afterlife in a non-dogmatic way. Affiliate groups welcome everyone, regardless of religious or non-religious background. Attendance today at this meeting is voluntary, and we are here for the benefit of learning from and sharing with other parents whose child has passed away. It is understood that our discussions are intended to be confidential and not designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. However, these Zoom meetings are helpful to parents all around the world, and they are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members who are not able to attend this meeting live can also watch. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers to allow parents to be informed about many possible ways to heal, to connect with their children, and to learn about the afterlife. The views expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect those of Helping Parents Heal, and we ask that you take from their presentations whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad you're here. Yes, we are so glad that you're here. And I just want to say that Joe is an amazing, he's, he's definitely different from your ordinary um, uh, parent who is going down this grieving path. Um, he's written two books so far. The second is called, We're Not Done Yet, Pop, My Lessons from My uh, from uh, the other side. And he's written both of these books with his son, Christopher. And um, he right now lives in Buffalo, but he travels all over the country. And I would say probably all over the world, unless there are problems with the pandemic, um, finding ways to heal and to communicate with his son. And I would love to be able to, I was very, very honored to write one of the forewords for this book. And I'd love to read the last paragraph so that you all can kind of understand about his personality and his quest. I highly recommend Joe McClellan's book. It is written by a professed ordinary guy who has undertaken an extraordinary journey to find his son in spirit and thus lead a joyful, purpose-filled life. He has proof that spirit, spirit communication is available to all of us, and the reader cannot help falling in love with them both, with him and with Christopher, because they're both just so wonderful. And without further ado, please join me in welcoming Joe McQuillan. Welcome, Joe. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, um, Elizabeth, that's love. I'm going to correct you. I'm from Buffalo, New York. I've lived in Chicago now for since 1984. I was uh, I'm the North Shore of Chicago. I was I was just passing through in 1984, and uh, somehow uh, you know the, I'm still here. And 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 the Greeks say that man plans and God's laugh. And so this is where I was supposed to be. And actually, where I was supposed to be is right in front of this uh, screen talking to you guys. You know, um, there was a wonderful wonderful movie. Uh, painful called Manchester by the sea that said, uh, my heart was broken. It'll always be broken. You know, the, the, what I love talking about to, to helping parents heal and groups like yours, but there aren't any groups like yours. Yours, 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 yours is this ours. It's very unique is that I don't have to explain that to anybody. You know, we, 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 we live our lives. I live my life. I, I have a life beyond my wildest dreams. You know, I'm, uh, I was a little wild in my youth. You know, it probably looks it. Um, 36 years sober. I'm, I'm married to the woman of my, my dreams for uh, just 30 years. Uh, three beautiful kids and one's on the other side. And, uh, and, and when he left, and I'll explain briefly how, I, how he left, but when he left this, this side, um, I wasn't ready to accept the world without him. So uh, flashback to uh, January of 2016, he was home from college. He's 21 years old. He was home from college. And uh, so last weekend before they were all going back to school and they decided to go up to uh, Wisconsin to a Lake Beulah in Wisconsin. One of the kids had a, parents had a lake house up there and uh, kick up their heels. And uh, for the last uh, weekend of the 
of the semester and, and then go on back to school. And uh, hey, John Hughes, how you doing, buddy? And, uh, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they, they went up there on a Saturday and went to, there was a dozen of them, guys and gals, and went to a, uh, a local tavern, you know, and shot some pool and drank a little bit too much and went back to the place and the party continued at about three o'clock in the morning. Uh, four boys at, would do what 21 year old boys do. They went outside and saw a, a boathouse and, and investigated and saw that, uh, that there was a canoe in there and, and there were life jackets, which they didn't put on. And, uh, and they had unlaced Timberland boots and layered clothing and uh, snoot full of alcohol. And the ice was, there was some ice on the lake and they paddled out. None of them made it back. I got a call while waiting to meet. Chris was going to come home. We were going to watch a Bill Buffalo Bills game with me and his brother and I. And uh, I got a, a, a text that said, Mr. McHugh, Chris and three of his friends are missing. Uh, uh, and so I grabbed my Labrador and jumped in my Jeep and started heading up north. And I just expected to find them with, with a pretty co-ed or, you know, you know, having too many drinks in somebody else's cabin or something. And halfway up, I got a call that said it wasn't, uh, it's no longer a search, but a recovery that all four drowned. You know, so I finished uh, the drive up there and, and I, you know, looking at you guys, I, I mean, I can envision walking in that big, big uh, house. And I've been back there twice since then. Um, and, and Chris told me it's, it's, it's just a lake. Don't come back. You know, my spirit's not here. Um, but I walked in in a big picture window and I saw on the lake, I saw flashing lights and rescue boats and, and people and probably in a little bit of shock. Um, and, and, uh, you know, they, they, in Wisconsin, you don't identify the body, you identify the, the picture. They took me downstairs and, and showed me a photo of my boy in Buffalo Bison's baseball, uh, jacket and, uh, and Celtic cross and, 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 and it was him, but it wasn't him, you know, um, 16 years before I had visited a medium on a, maybe a spiritual quest or a lark or, and the, the reading was pretty mundane. Um, it wasn't a whole lot going on until she, she got to the very end. And she's, she's up by you, Elizabeth. She's, she's, uh, her name is Nancy Myers and she's in surprise, Arizona. And, and, but when I saw her, she was here in, in Illinois and, at the end of it, she said, you know, your dad's here and he's holding a caboose and he's, and he's telling your railroad. Now, if you look behind on my, on my bookcase is a railroad lantern. My dad spent 40 years on the railroad. Every boy, there were five boys in my family, five girls in my family. Every boy worked on the railroad during college. I stayed out of work a couple years after. And, uh, and uh, my uncle was a railroader. My grandfather was a railroad, we were a railroad family. So when I got that message, it was like, oh, great. You know, the old man, you know, sent me a message, which meant the old man is somewhere. And I just put that in a file cabinet, my emotional file cabinet and, uh, and, and got on with my life. But here it is 16 years later. And it came to me that if my old man is somewhere, Christopher's got to be with him. And, 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 and my next question was, how do I get there? How do I connect? How do I tune in? Um, and kind of like Bob Olson, who wrote a fabulous book, I either wanted to figure out the answers or if it was, if this was all smoke and mirrors and, and, and will we BS, I wanted to know that too, and figure out something, another channel for my grief. And that started uh, my quest, you know, uh, the quest started with, uh, you know, before I started my quest, I actually had to make all the phone calls, you know, tell his mom that, uh, that, that her voice drowned and, uh, and, and William in the second book, wrote my son, William was 22 at Boulder right now. And he wrote, a, he wrote a story and, it, and it's called the worst, first of the worst. And he talked about how his mom, you know, bellowed when she'd heard, gotten the phone call and he had never heard a sound like that in his life. And he also said that he'd never seen his dad cry before. Now, I didn't realize that, but his dad certainly has learned to cry since then, you know, and, and don't hide it anymore. And, uh, so all the plans, all the everything you had to make, and we've all been through it, right? Gravestones and plots and and uh, and and churches and 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 psalms and readings and receptions. And uh, and every, every night I would get on my knees and thank God for my sobriety. I've been sober thirty six years, and my family. But I would say, you know, 
we're not, you know, we're not good, God, you and me. You took my kid. And the third night, I got a message back that said, I didn't take your son. Your son's free will and recklessness caused him to come home early. And I welcomed him. And remember, I lost a son too. So my relationship changed from a God that I thought was kind of like a member of the cabinet post, you know, somebody you believed he was there, but was no relation, you know, no connection to a loving father that held me during those, those times that I wasn't sure how I was putting one foot in front of the other, you know. There, just recently, I, I, I read a book a long time ago called The Shack. And I refer to it in the book because the shack was a thin place, a place where the veil is thinnest between both words, worlds. And, and God spoke to a, a father who'd lost a daughter in a horrible way. And God said to him, just because I work incredible good out of unspeakable tragedies doesn't mean I orchestrate the tragedies, you know? So it, I, I put it together that, 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 that that's just life. You know, this is, what, this is how life works. Um, I learned a little bit about exit points. I learned about what's fair. And fair is where you go to eat can uh, cotton candy and ride the merry-go-round. Fair doesn't play into what goes on. It's just life. And, and those of us who've, you know, felt probably the worst pain that any human could feel, you know, um, only to find out that our kids are accessible. You know, as, as the brilliant writer, uh, medium Susan Giesman would say, they're still right here, right? So I, I wanted to find out. So I went to mediums. I, I talked to, uh, uh, I, I talked to uh, Nancine a couple of times and, you know, she finally, she wouldn't let me call her anymore. She's like, look, you know, you, 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 we can't do this. And, which is like a good therapist isn't going to let you, you know, call, you got to heal on your own a little bit. But I really wanted to look into the eyes of a medium who was talking to my son, because now I, I bought this. I believe this, right? I, you know, I believe this. So I looked up a medium. It turns out it was on Bob Olson's website that I didn't even realize that I revisited it. And I picked out a local guy named Andrew Anderson. And two things that happened. Uh, I'd set an appointment and uh, Christopher was buried in January 8th, 2016. And it was snow covered and it was, uh, you know, winter in, in Chicago at land area. And when the snow started to melt, I saw that even though we had bought three plots, six all together with my buddy, that they buried him next to another couple named the Sheridans, who probably nice people. As a matter of fact, Chris said, they're nice enough people, dad. But I was miffed. You know, I, you know that's my kid. He's not buried next to anybody. So um, after a little stomping and, 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 and raising a little hell and whining and writing a check. Yeah, I moved him over one, you know. So here it is, uh, June 30th of 2016. And I'm going to go see the medium today. And uh, Amazon had just delivered some shamrock seeds. And since the, the dirt around his grave was loose, it was perfect time for me to plant the shamrock seeds. And I, I go to the grave all the time. So that instinct that y'all get, that says do something and you say, oh, am I just being silly? No, you know, at least all I can speak is my experience, strength and hope. It's not silly. It's a higher voice telling you to do something. So I did it and I'm grateful every time I'm there because I did it. So uh, I went there I, and, and before I left the house, um, I have a bracelet that you can see here. Uh, I can show it to you. It's just a leather thong bracelet and it says dad on it. And the clasp has Goofy on it, which is kind of fun. And Christopher, when he was six, we were at Disney World for our one trip or two trips second trip, yeah, to Disney World. And he, he had his mom buy it and he gave it to me. He was so proud of that. And I had worn it that weekend, that week or whatever, and then put it in a, in a dresser. And something caused me to put it on that day. And uh, so I put it on, put my sleeve down, went to the grave, planted his shamrock seeds and, and, and went out to see uh, a medium in person for the first time and, you know, second time in my life and the first time in 20 years or 16 years. So I walked in and Andrew and I are still to this day, we're friends, you know, um, 
I was just out there for a spirit circle and I had him do a reading with Chris uh, last week. And actually John Hughes made it, you know, I, I come down and he said, I'm glad you're here. Cause John's here. I was like, okay, who's John? And he said, well, John's a guy who lost his son and he drove here from Nebraska. And uh, turns out he had either seen a, uh, an interview or read the book and got connected with Andrew and came in and I was honored to be sitting next to him and this other woman, Chloe, who lost a, a husband. And I got a message from Chris for both of them that night, which I shared with them. And that's their business. And, uh, uh, but it was pretty cool. Uh, so I go and I, I plant these shamrock seeds. And to this day, you know, if you go to the grave, you can still see some shamrocks uh, come up in the spring. So I went out to Andrews and uh, I walked in and uh, I went into his office and, and, you know, with the big crystals and the, and the, and the, and the posters of the, 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 the Chinese lanterns. And, 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 you know, I sat down and, and he said, you know, Chris is here. And he said, Chris acknowledges a couple of things. One is that your family came together on the other side and Chris was there yesterday for something to do with you. What was that? Now, this guy knew my first name. That's it. Well, that was the night before was Sally and my wedding anniversary, you know, which we, we, you know, we're, we're, we're married 30 years now, but, you know, it's something you really don't celebrate a lot when, uh, you know, a year or two after you're, you've lost your, your oldest or youngest or middle. And uh, he said, and I thought, wow, that's impressive. And then he said, Christopher acknowledges you wearing his bracelet. And Christopher acknowledges you stopped and planted something in his grave recently, like today. He goes, when did you do that? I said, today. And that was the moment, guys, that I went from believing, because I believed that Christopher was on the other side. I believed that I could connect with him through mediums, and, and it got even better after that. But that's the moment it switched from a believing to a knowing. And I, I've never looked back, you know. Um, had some wonderful experiences with some great mediums, Thomas John and, and Andrew and Sherry Jewell. And, and a lot of these people have become part of my lives, which is almost, which is quite, kind of incredible. So I, I started to taking to, and, and, and this is, once again, you know, I started, I, I came in with very little knowledge of, of what this is all about, right? I believed in God, like I believed in the postmaster general, but, and I knew we lived in heaven, but that really didn't matter to me. I, like my son, I'm bulletproof, you know, what would ever happen to me? So, you know, why should I worry about what's next or who's over there? You know, so um, I started coming in this room. This room is my office. It's a home office. And, uh, but it used to be Christopher's bedroom and his, his spirit moves pretty freely here. So I started coming in around three o'clock in the morning. Well, it's no, no big surprise yet. Guys, my age get up in the middle of the night sometimes. And, uh, and, and, and so I started coming in here and meditating and I, and I, I, I have a chakra chart, you know, and I light sage and I have crystals and I was laughing to Elizabeth because do I look like a guy <laughs> with light sage and, and hold a crystal and, and, and align my chakras? You know, when I started listening and reading what other people do to try to connect. So I light candles. I put a picture of Chris or Chris and my sister or whoever I'm trying to connect. And I would, as I'm aligning my chakras, when I get to each level, I take a breath, hold it for seven seconds. Why seven? Because Jen Weigel told me seven, right? And she hasn't lied to me yet. And then when I exhaled, I would exhale Christopher's name. So I felt really close to him and I continued to do this. And on the anniversary of his cross on January 3rd, 2017, I came in the office, did my routine, um, started listening, and I, I, I listened to uh, guided meditation to reach the other side. And I turned all the lights off except the candles. And, and after that was over, I started getting downloads from Christopher. And, and it said, hey, Pop. You know, and Nancy said to me, he calls you something. Did he call you Pap or Pip? I said, no, he called me Pop. And, and, and he said, hey, Pop, uh, you're not going to believe this place. It's, it's freaking unbelievable. The colors the love he said the air is always warm but it's love air you know and and i i had a legal pad next to me so i just started writing you know and i started taking down this dictation and i'm wondering if i'm you know losing my 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 going off the deep end here um and he kept talking 
And I kept writing. Now, as opposed to channel writing, I knew exactly what he was saying. And it was in my handwriting. So this is called spirit writing. So, you know, I, don't, I, you know, I was in a meditative state, but I was aware of what I was doing. And at one point he said to me, you got to let go of the resentment, dad. You got to let go. He said, uh, I loved Scotty. It was, you know, and he loved me. We were pals. It wasn't his fault. And Scotty's the kid whose parents owned the lake house. Now, since I was already good with God, since he came and visited, you know, I had to be mad at somebody, you know, I'm Irish, you know, Irish Alzheimer's is we forget everything but the grudges. And so I was, I was mad. And he said, and so I thought, you know what? Sure, Chris, sure, Chris, I can let go of this resentment. And besides, when am I ever going to see Scotty again, right? 12 hours later, I get a text. Sally and I were going to meet at the grave, launch a, uh, launch a uh, uh, Chinese lantern and celebrate our, our boy and love him. And at three o'clock, I got a text from some of his college friends who said, Mr. McHugh, there's a few of us here. Do you want to stop by? And I thought, oh, that's amazing. So I grabbed the hockey cooler, threw some ice on it and a box of cigars and and drove up there. And by the time I got there, it was like 35 kids at his grave. It was impromptu. It all just came together. And one of the first kids I saw was, Chris, or was uh, Scotty. So what that tells me is my loving son was preparing me for this encounter where I can go in with a, a loving heart instead of, you know, dodging them or ducking or resentment. You know, that, starts, that started a uh, tradition that we do that every year on January 3rd, including COVID, when instead of coming to the house for pizza, I put tents up and heaters and we did it outside, you know, and, and at five degrees and had a wonderful time. And these kids are, are still part of my life. You know, they're, they're our lives. You know, they're like air to breathe. So I, I took all these stories, all these medium sessions, all these dialogues at Chris and we, Chris and I still do this a couple times a month. Um, and I get up and I drag my tired old bones into my office and, and start the process. And I figured I was just going to put them all together in a, in a folder, according to date, and someday smoking a cigar, sitting on a, on a, on a porch, I could review these. But, but he had another plan, you know? you know? He wanted me to put this together in a book to share so that other people know that their kids, like Susan says, aren't gone, you know? So I'm getting ready to finish this book, and uh, I'm a little sad. I'm a little maudlin. You know, because this connection has been so amazing. And uh, after, and I was just about last few chapters, and he said, "Hey, we're not done yet, Pop, and we're not gonna be done until you're ready to cross over." So then I knew, okay, you know, this connection is not going to end with the publishing of the first book. So it freed me to continue to write the second book. But he would tell me things like, "You're not an expert. You're still learning." You know, he'd keep the old man in place. And he would say, you got it. And he would chastise me. He would through mediums. He would say, you got to finish the book, Pop. You got to help people. And you got to let dads know it's okay to feel. It's okay to cry. He'd say, you're a good ambassador. Look at you. <laughs> and then Andrew said, and he's laughing at your haircut. You know, but look at you. You know, you're the guy that they'll listen to. And so, you know, that's been my journey. I've been following the breadcrumbs. You know, the first, first book was really just the journey itself. And, and, and I'm real proud of that book. And, and one of the reasons I can say that in all humility is that Chris was there for every keystroke, every paragraph, you know, and then the second book, which was the continuation, but it's fresh. Now, these are things I'm trying to expand my horizons. You can't just sit on your butt and, and wait for your kid to come visit. You know, I remember speaking at Wilmot Theater with Jen Weigel, who's, a, who's a, an angel in her own right. And a woman said to me, well, my sister died three years ago and she hasn't come visit. I said, well, what have you done? You know, and on, the other, on our side, if you hadn't called your sister in three years, you think she'd pick up the phone? Do your, do, you got to do your job, man. You got to work. You got to raise your level of consciousness and they can lower theirs and we can connect in the middle. But if you don't do your part, you know, then, then nothing's going to happen. So, you know, don't complain to me that you haven't connected when you haven't put in the work. Go see a medium, get a kick started, you know. Um, to this day, Chris and I still connect. We connect for some reason, the beaches in, in the Gulf Coast of Florida, uh, and, and, you know, a, a, after his, his crossing, 
I ducked out of my best friend's wedding and, and went to uh, both Lido and Siesta Key in two nights. And Chris, just as Thomas John said, walked through me that night. You know, I, I keep a, I keep a, a, a little glass container of, 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 of Siesta Key uh, sand until my best friend who lives in, 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 in Sarasota said, it's not sand, it's quartz crystal. So I thought, well, that sounds like a, a hokey, you know, BS. And I looked it up and you know what? The sand on Siesta Key is made of quartz crystal that was flown down from the Appalachian 2000 years ago, which is why you can walk on that beach when it's hotter than, hotter than Hades and your feet, you no, know, it doesn't get hot. So I've gone to Siesta Key. I've given an example. I was, I was, my sister was transitioning, my, my absolute favorite sister who, who I just adored. She was Christopher's godmother and a, and a wonderful gal. And, and, you know, we were, she was transitioning and, and I got to tell you, she was a big source of love for me growing up, I mean, huge source of love for me growing up. Sometimes when I wasn't so lovable um, and she was also tough, you know, I, I fear no man, but she scared me when she got mad, you know? And, uh, and she said to me, uh, maybe four or five days before she transitioned, she said to me, honey, you gave me the greatest gift. I read your book and I'm not afraid to die. You know, um, you know, later on that night, I went down to the beach uh, in Naples, went down and I got up and I sat down on the, on the, on the, on the sand and lit a cigar. And I got a sign. I got a message in my head said, go to, go to Siesta Key. Well, come on, man. That's like, three and a half, four hours round trip. So I said, all right, Chris, if you really want me to do this, I'm going to check my phone. And if it's open, I'm going, but I'm not going to go there and be locked out, you know, at one o'clock in the morning, flip open the phone, not flip open, it turns it on. I'm not, this isn't 1984. And, 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 and it said, siesta key open 24 hours. And I said, son of a gun, stopped at my sister's grab, you know, a couple of Red Bulls and a handful of cigars, you know, sorry, hurt to rent a car and, and, and drove up there. And I got there and I laid on the sand and I just felt him all over, all over. And all I could envision was him up in heaven with one of his pals, you know, like Max, you know, one of his buddies um, or like Chris and, and, and saying, see, I told you the old man would show, you know? So when I talk about that and people laugh, I said, you know, how far would you go to spend an hour with your kid? You know, four hours, piece of cake, I'm in, you know? And, and so that's the kind of effort, you know? And I will tell you that Chris promised me when Marsha transitioned that he'd be there. And when she transitioned, he said, dad, I was here. And she died of cancer and she had a tough cancer for the last three years, you know, but you'd go to visit her to ease her burden and she'd ask you how you're doing. And I'd start crying, you know, and she'd be there for me. And she'd say, oh, honey, I know. And, uh, you know, so he said, Dad, she came and we were all there. Bobby, Jerry, Billy, Pat, which are all the siblings on the other side. And she's, they were there, but then she had to go somewhere. And, went, and, and like a spa, he said. And when she came back, she was younger than even when I was a kid. Now, these are the reasons I know this isn't me. I got to be honest with you. I'm not that smart. So what I figured out from what Chris was telling me is that her, she had cancer that stayed with her body when she, on this side, but the trauma crossed with her and they had to go somewhere like a spa to process that and then let her re-engage with the soul family. And I thought, son of a gun, you know, you know, look at what he's showing me. What else do I need to learn? And, and the truth of the matter is I need to learn a lot. There's a lot. I've come a long way from, from, I'm a different guy than I was in January 3rd, 2016. You know, there's a, there's a quote from Haruki Murakami. Now, who the heck would think I'd be quoting you a spiritual sonnet from Haruki Murakami, right? But he said, once the storm is over, you won't remember how you made it, how you made it through, how you managed to survive. You won't even be sure, in fact, whether the storm is really over. But one thing is certain. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walked in. That's what storms are all about, you know. And so this event that took Christopher from my side, it, it was horrifying, it was a horrifying storm. 
and you can't unring that bell. Although I got to tell you, I would trade one Thursday night football game and a pizza for all the knowledge I have uh, of the metaphysical. What, what we have is a knowledge that our kids are still around, but it's a bad trade, right? But we can't unring that bell. So this is what we got. So what are we going to do? You know, I've got given this amazing connection with this wonderful son on the other side. Amazing. But I got to give it away to keep it. If I hoard it, I don't know how long I get to keep it, you know? So I go to his grave all the time and it's not like some sad old man feeding pigeons. I love being there. I usually have my Labrador who's getting ready to transition. And Chris has told me that he's there with our first dog. You know, when they say that, you know, the Irish say that heaven's a place where your dog talks and your dad's always young, you know, and, and you can sign me up for that one, you know, but when I talk to groups, I say, look, it, don't feel sorry for me. I live this wonderful life beyond my wildest dreams. I still have work to do. I've got books to write. I got parents to talk to. I got two other kids to finish raising, even though they're not babies. You know, I got a, a wonderful wife, you know, but when it's time to cross, I'm ready. You know, I got to be his dad for 21 years on this side. And when I transition, I get to pick it up just like it is now. You know, that's not changing. So like my sister, I'm not afraid to die. You know, I'm not looking for it. You know, the, the following January, after, uh, uh, after Marsha transitioned, I went out to the West suburbs and I saw this medium named Jill Nicole. Cool gal, lovely gal. And she said, your son's here, but there's a woman here who has the title of sister, mother, aunt. And I said, oh, it's Marsha. And she said, honey, thank you for the greatest gift, you know. So that was, a Chris, that was a birthday present from Marcia to me because I know that she's with my boy and my boy's with my dad. And someday, not so near future, I'm going to join them all, you know, and, and that's not such a bad deal. So what I'd love to do, well, we've got time and, and I'm pretty good because they say being Irish means you don't know how to tell a short story, you know, but I wanted to leave enough time because I, I wanted to talk to you guys and, 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 don't text questions, you know, raise a hand or reach out to Elizabeth because please just ask me anything because um, I'd love to connect with you guys. And thank you for listening to me tonight. Oh, Joe, you're just amazing. And I just have to tell you, first of all, that people are saying in the chat box, I love him so much like the men I know, which I think that we all identify with that. Um, Anna thinks that is so beautiful. Suzanne is saying no better an ambassador. You were talking about being an ambassador. Yeah. Iris has read both your book and uh, Jen's and she actually is going for Dana's birthday to Siesta Key. Oh. She wants to experience the sand and the beach and connect with her daughter that way. So it's wonderful that you talked about this. Go there um, at night. You know, it's Siesta Key. It's open to, and I mean, you don't have to be in the middle of the night. Only lunatics like me do that. But go there at night, and and take a a folding chair. I found one that was just there, and and I let go of a uh, I lit a Chinese lantern after I figured out how to do it and stop setting my son's grass fire around his you know grave around his uh, grass around his grave on fire, and and I just did that last time we were there. Let my wife and I were there last uh, last March. And, and, and it was amazing, overwhelming, so phenomenal. So yeah, great. I'm so glad you, that's a thin place for me. Well, and another thing is that Iris is saying that Haruki Murakami is Dana's favorite author, oh. as well as uh, Sabina Chowdhury is always, is also saying the same thing that it's her favorite author. But before we do any of these questions, I didn't get to say in the introduction that you are a huge, um, uh, you you do so much for the Inbalance Ranch in um, Wachuca, and I I love the fact that you're constantly going there to see the kids who are there, yeah. and you're fundraising for for that ranch. Maybe you could just say a little bit about that so that people know a little bit more about the fact yeah. that not only are you a fabulous person and you do so much for other people, but you also have this cause, this, um, this foundation that you're working for, which is just so wonderful. You know, Inbound Ranch Academy is a boarding school for, for teens, boys with addiction, you know, between 14 and 18. 
and Chris had his struggles and we sent him there and, and then he stayed on there as life coach and kind of became a family to Patrick and Betsy Barrasso, who, you know, bought this uh, bankrupt dude ranch and, and, and started a therapeutic boarding school, you know, equestrian. And, uh, and, it, you know, just, just even the whole premise of it, at first I'm thinking, you know, if they bought a place for the pool, would this be water polo therapy? Well, I figured out that this equine therapy was amazing and it, 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 what it did for the boys. So I go out there once a year, you know, I, I didn't because of COVID, but I'm going back out. And one of my favorite hours of the entire year is they just give, I'm just there for an hour with the boys, like 40 boys in a circle, 14, 15. Now, remember, I was, I was a bad kid, you know, I get them and they get me, you know, I can love right through their behavior, you know, and, and I talked and all the, the conversation all starts the same with them all, you know, folded arms and leaning back and it ends up with everybody crying, hugging, making promises, staying connected but they do so much good for, for teen boys and they do scholarships for kids that can't afford this. It's like a hundred thousand dollars a year and, and, you know, kids that can't afford this. So yeah, I'm honored that they let me on the, uh, on the board. And, and so they'll send me letters of, you know, people petitioning to have their kids. Uh, and I'd say, look, you guys are the expert, you know, you know, I'll just keep banging the drum, you know, but you guys are the expert. So you pick out who should get the scholarships, you know, but it's in the desert. It's, it's in the foothills and, and it's just a, a magic place. You know, there's a, there's a, uh, uh, fire pit named after my son. And a couple of years back, they built a new, um, uh, a, a, a new bunkhouse, you know, and it's, it's, it's the Chris McQuillan Manor, you know? So, um, I just love them. And I love that, you know, we can do some good out of this horrific bad, just like, like it said in the shack, you know, so look it up, look up in balance ranch Academy. It'll make you smile, you know, and a lot of, a lot of souls are saved there, you know. And you are doing so much to save so many people, Joe, this is just wonderful. Shelly's saying, I love listening to Joe each and every time, such a genuine and nice person with a warm heart. And I think we all agree to that. But uh, Yolanda is saying that she has a question she'd like to ask you. Normally we do this in the chat box. So I don't know what the question is. Are you willing to have me go ahead and unmute her? So yeah, that she yeah. Can I, have, I have big shoulders. I'm not afraid of a question. Yolanda, what's your okay. question? I asked so, her to unmute. Okay, thanks, Irene. Yolanda. Hi, Yolanda. Can you say something? Can you unmute? Hello? There you are. Okay. There you are. <laughs> Um, I was going to ask the question on the chat box, but he said he would rather have, you know, like talk, talk. So yeah. here, here I am raising my hand first. Good. Um, well, first, you know, I love to hear the story. Like I'm new to the group. Uh, my son passed away almost four months ago, uh, but accidental overdose. But he didn't live with me for years due to the addiction problem. So he was in and out of the house. So the story here is not so much like he didn't even have a room in my house anymore because of the boundaries and I have another daughter. So he was living in New York. The relationship was okay. You know, that night that he passed, I gave him my blessings as every night. It wasn't as crazy as it was you know before well I didn't know he was doing that bad sure. it was all a, a, a life that I didn't know he was having so it's hard for me to even you know communicate like you said try to feel his presence in one of the rooms because I had my house cleaned and clean and blessed a couple of weeks ago just because a lot happened in this house like a lot of bad and I had to get rid of those thoughts sure. that you know come to my head of everything that happened before for years um i uh, i have an an appointment with a medium and it was changed from this weekend to december so i'm going to start with that because i really do want to hear from him like sure maybe maybe he doesn't want to talk about he did it on purpose or not you know but i want to know I want to hear, I want to know something else. But a lot of people tell me, and that this is my question, like when they haven't lost anyone, obviously it's easy to say. Yeah. 
uh, and I haven't obviously said to anybody, we, I just talk about, you know, mediums and stuff. And they're like, are you crazy? You don't let him cross over. He's going to be, you know, here. And this is not the place anymore. You just you don't put a candle by his ashes because, you know, you, you, you're not going to let him go. And it's like you're obsessing over it. So how much is too much? Okay, Yolanda, first of all, get new friends. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm going to tell you. No, I'm going to tell you something. If they, they can't, if they can't be supportive of you now, you know, I re I remember worried that my connection with Chris was keeping him here, and he kind of poo pooed it. He laughed at me. He said, "Dad, you'll never. You're not smart enough to figure this out until you cross over, but I can be with you and still do my job on the other side." And another thing, Yolanda, Christopher said to me that there were some exit points in his life. And that things were going to get messy. He was drinking too much. He was, it was getting out of control. And he said to me, things are going, you know, it was time for me to leave. Even it certainly didn't take his life. You know, it, it was it just happened. It was a stupid mistake, but he mm -hmm. said, things were going to get messy. So sometimes, you know, um, you just got to accept what you got to accept. But I do think that if you have people telling you about dark spirits and you know, him keeping him connected because you're honoring him with a candle, go get a new friend or call somebody in this group. You know, the, 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 the saying that time heals all wounds. Whoever said that never lost a kid, you know, so exactly. Yolanda, honor, honor your boy. Listen, get some messages, get some answers, right? Love him through it all. But, uh, you know, don't go to the wrong source for, you know, you, you know, for that kind of information, you know, um, you know, so you know, stay with the people in this room. They get it. They don't question you. You know, I'm sure a lot of people think that I've left the reservation. You know, I talked to my son, you know, who's been gone almost six years. And the truth matters, Yolanda, I don't care. You know, I was raised in this loving clan and I had the confidence to know what I know. And what I know is your boy wants to connect with you and he's happy whether he overdosed, took his life, whatever. Right now, that trauma is gone. He's happy. So just accept that and, and connect with this medium and go to another one and figure it all out and read and experience and go to lectures. Everybody's here trying to help you heal. You got to accept it, but go to the right place. Okay? Thank you. You're That's welcome. Beautiful. And Teresa is saying that she also has... Um... She had a Christian prayer group for mothers of addicted kids that said that people can't talk to the dead. They were poo-pooing Catholics. I'm not Catholic, but it really disturbed me. I think that, I think that one thing that you do prove is that um, we all can connect with our kids in spirit, and it doesn't matter what we believe. We don't have to um, be uh woo woo because definitely oh. I, I know that suzanne talks about people being woo woo uh suzanne geesman you are definitely not <laughs> anyone, anyone would be able to describe as woo woo right and it's so much fun to hear you talk about connecting with christopher at three in the morning right. and i go back because there was there was a question about that sure um, last night we were talking about the fact that the veil is the thinnest between three and five in the morning right I wanted to ask if you think that that's the case. And also, uh, someone was asking about the chakra chart that you use. Is it a specific ch uh, chakra chart or is there? Um... You know, I got one of that. I tried to, I've got a photo of it, but I, I tried to uh, save it and download it and it won't let me. It was from Andrew Anderson. But I think most chakra charts will explain the levels is really sufficient. It's it. They all have the same number of chakras. Right. Um, and. I don't think that three to five is, is when the spirits are most active. I know it, right? I first thought that this three o'clock thing was because Christopher drowned around that time between three and four. But I've subsequently been told by him, by mediums, that it's because then when they're, that's the most active. And you know why that is? I have no idea, right? And, but that's the, you know, that's, that, that's, there's a, there, it's funny, they say, you know, the, the largest animal, mammal on earth is the, the sperm whale, and yet it can only eat the smallest plankton. And you know why that is? Because that's the way it is, you know, and that's why I feel about three o'clock. You know, would it be better if it was at seven? I don't know. I'm kind of up and running in my work mode at seven or eight. 
But at three, I'm all connected to spirit. I'm ready to go. So it fits my timeline. Um, and, and it's not my timeline. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm embracing kind of a, a, a time honored uh, tradition of three to four being what's called the bewitching hour. That's very interesting. And Suzanne Klokenga has a question. And Hi, I, Suzanne. Um, I would love to be able to unmute her. I, Irene, do you, are you able to do that maybe? Um, yes, I've asked her to unmute. Okay, Suzanne. There you go. Hi, Suzanne. So, um, in the book, you had mentioned something that, you know, I know you said a lot of things that I could relate to, as you know, but there was one thing there that um, it was almost verbatim of what I say all the time, that about six months before Chris, your Chris passed over, I'm paraphrasing here, something yeah. about you knew something wasn't right, you couldn't put your finger on. I'm telling you, I say that all the time. Yeah. I think even our soul can sense, we don't really know what we're sensing. And uh, that was my first question is, what do you think of that? And it kind of relates to the knowingness yeah. versus like this last uh, mom that talked about her experiences with people doubting mediums and such. I had that too um, over at Willow Creek Church in Barrington, uh, you know, oh, it's Satan and this and that. And even though I had that knowingness and my son was also warning me, he knew something was up for him. He had a knowingness. I still think it's important and I want your opinion on this. I think I know what you'll say. I still think it's important to stay clear of those situations in order to protect ourselves because we don't ever fully recover. We just learn to carry the grief. Yeah. We don't need to subject ourselves to that kind of, sometimes it's an onslaught. People get resentful. So even among the knowingness, I avoid that like the plague. I wanted your thoughts on that. Well, two things, two great points. One is, yeah, Christopher, I, I went out to, um, he was out in uh, St. Paul and we had this great weekend, 4th of July in 2015. And we went to a St. Paul Saints ball game minor league baseball game and and you know that's the the, pic, the first picture of of my and my search for Christopher on the other side was on the cover was us at that game and it was just but there was something I felt something a little different yeah. a little distant and 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 he had actually said to me he was already preparing to transition he didn't even know it yeah. and he said that uh that, you know that that it all will make sense when I cross over and as far as the naysayers, you know, one of the first interviews I ever did on a Dallas radio station, a lovely gal said to me, you know, what do you tell people, you know, that, 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 you know, just aren't, they're skeptics and aren't believers. I said, tell them change channel. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care what they think. I care what you think. Yeah. You know, people who've lost kids, people who go through life, even when you can figure out how to be happy with a, with a piece of your heart always missing until you're connected again. That's who I care about. You're my tribe, right? So if somebody else has a problem with it, tell your story walking, right? I don't, I don't quote, you know, the, the Bible very often, 13 years of Catholic school, the 13 year, the 13 year didn't work out the last one. We had a series of misunderstandings and, uh, and I, and I, I went to a different college and, uh, but, but, you know, it's, it's Christ talked about that when you come across people that don't believe that wipe them like dust from your sandals, you know, you don't have to prove anything to anybody and you don't have to listen to nonsense. You know, I just, you know, smile and wave and walk away, you know, and, and don't encounter them again. And when I want to connect, I go on your website and I read your stories mm -hmm. and it makes me feel whole and it makes me feel good again. And it makes me feel part of the community. And if anybody's giving you negative BS, you know, tell them Joe McQuillan says, stick it up their ditty bag, you know? That's you know what I, I think, I think um, the knowingness kind of, then we know instinctively part of that is to stay away. And um, I do. Me too. <laughs> I can't. Suzanne, you know, 
I just want to say that Suzanne Wilson has said um, numerous times, do not cast your pearls in front of swine. And that's yeah. something that she feels <sighs> about these beautiful readings that we get. And we go and talk to family members and to friends and think that everybody's going to be all excited about them. And then when we have someone say that they don't believe it and they look at us in a strange way, it ruins everything. So you don't have to be talking to those people about it. You can talk to us here at Helping Parents Heal. There's another question in the chat box from Martina, and we don't have a lot of time, but this is, this is I think, one of the most important questions that maybe you can answer for everyone. Joe, how does it feel when you channel your boy? Are you able to describe it at all? Is it subtle or is it clear to you? And you know without a doubt that it's him. What a wonderful question. I mean, that really is a great question. And it, it's, it's, it's not abrupt, but it's not subtle. You know, have you ever been under a tree and, and, and the sunlight is, in, and, and you're in the shade and you walk out and you feel bathed by this warm light? That's what it feels like. I get a chill on the back of my neck and he's here right now. I get a chill on the back of my neck. Um, I've only seen him in meditation twice. So I'm working on that. Remember, I'm, you know, I'm six years in, you know, you know, that's, you know, it's dog years, you know, I'm, 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 I'm just trying to figure this out. But I do know that when he's around, I can sense him. I can smell him. I can feel him. Um, I'm really working hard on, on seeing him. The fact that I've been able to see him twice, I, you know, really makes my heart sing. Um, but it's, it's, it's not anything that I doubt anymore. You know, early on, it's like, what does this mean? How come I feeling this? What, now, it, and by the way, it used to be that I'd finish the guided meditation and then he'd come through and start, you know, uh, giving me downloads. I barely get through, I barely get through the half of the meditation, a third of the meditation before he's there and, and sending me messages. You know, it's like, all right, pop, we know how to do this. So let's knock out the routine and get this thing done. And we do. You know, so it's, it's, it certainly isn't subtle where you're willing. We're like, I wonder if he's here. I know when he's here, I get a chill on the back of my neck. Um, my friend, Sherry Jewell, who's a medium gets a tingling on top of her head when spirits are out. So whatever the indication is for you, don't doubt it. Don't second guess it. You know, thank who's ever sending it to you and embrace them. You know, I literally get, I, I feel hugs. I feel this from him. We used to hug, we were huggers, you know, uh, and that's it, you know? And, and so, no, I know it, it literally, it stopped being a wonder a long time ago, Elizabeth. That's beautiful. And I feel the same way and I get hugs from Morgan and I think everybody knows that. I just, I feel like it's, it's something that when Morgan transitioned, actually, when he hugged me, I thought that everybody in the world must experience this because it was just so clear to me <laughs> that it was hugging me. And then I realized that I was, I was fortunate and unfortunate because Chelsea was already over there and she was the one who brought him to me to hug me. Yeah. And so that's the reason that I got that hug. And I know that this is true. I love what we have in the chat box. Anna is saying, I was raised by Cuban Catholic parents the day my daughter Leanne transitioned. My beliefs, my religion, my fear left me. I am on a spiritual awakening journey. I have had so many signs, synchronicities, and connections with my daughter, Leanne, which is, of course, we all have too. Um, and Teresa saying, I love that feeling when we know they are connecting, which is true. Yeah. Again, and it's available to everybody here. If you do your part, you're going to get what Elizabeth gets, what I get, you know, what Suzanne gets, you know, you're going to it's available to you. you you know some maybe due to the spirit's strength or power it might be lower or less or take more time um but they're there and they want to connect what what kid doesn't want to connect with his mom right you know years after a year after christopher transition we saw uh, a, a a tweet a tweet a twitter you know that said two things in this world that i love most is my mom and my dog you know I mean, what kind of, how, what a wonderful message that, that Sally could see that on, on his phone and his Twitter account or whatever, and, and see that. See, that's, that's what they're doing. They're sending those messages, you know, and, and what, what we've got is very special, but it doesn't have to be unique. You know, you just got to open up. 
Well, and what we all want from you is to tell Christopher to help all of all of our kids to connect with us the way that he's connected yeah. with you. And I know that it takes as much work on our part as it does on theirs, but I also know that they are working just as hard as we are to connect. So um, knowing that Christopher's doing such a fabulous job and advocating yes. this amazing second. Book. Here's what I'd like to offer, by the way. You know, the book is in both books. Um, read the first one first. And, and I've read a bunch of these books. It's a good book. And I can say that because it really was Chris. Um, second, if there's anybody here, it's Christmas. You guys got families, you got kids. You know, anybody here doesn't have the 16 or, you know, whatever box. Just go in the chat room or text me or whatever, connect. I'll send you a book. You know, I, it's important that you read it. But it's not important that you pay for it. You know, if, if, if it's a tough time for you, just reach out somehow, you know, and, and, and you know, uh, friend me on Facebook. My email is jbmcquillen at gmail.com. You know, um, if you love the book, do me a favor, put a review in there. Um, but I think the best part of it is it's a, it's a how-to, kind of a how-to for dummies. You know, I was brand new walking in this thing, and I was given this wonderful, wonderful spirit to guide me through. You know, then that was Chris. And, and so, so if it's, it's a tough time coming up and, 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 you know, the difference between doing that and, and getting something for Christmas for your kids, just email me. I'll, I'll overnight your book. That's beautiful. Johnny, Johnny's phone. So um, is saying, jo Joe, I love what you were saying so much. It will be two years this November 24th. My boy uh, has transitioned. My heart is broken. The first year in an awful numbing this year is pain but thank you because what you have said tonight for all of these parents is just so helpful and healing um let's see um i i just i i want you to know that you're making a difference in the world and that all of these parents who are going down this path who never imagined I think that maybe Irene and I are a little different than you are because we're we're moms. We're maybe a little woo woo. Definitely, I. <laughs> you're allowed to be woo woo. Yeah. But you are down to earth, and you're so much fun to listen to. And hearing you connecting with Christopher is just such a beautiful story. And Thanks. thank you for sharing it with us. And do you have any parting words besides that beautiful offer of your book to uh, people who might not be able to afford it, but um, anything else that you'd like to leave us with this evening? Just, just listen to what, what Susan Giesman says. You just got to remember that they're still right here. You know, they're here. You're not alone, but they're here. And so are we, you know, so thanks for listening to me tonight. I sure appreciate it. Thank you. This was thank wonderful. You, it was beautiful. We always ask everyone to unmute and say thank you and goodbye at the end of the meeting. So Irene, I think you've already done yeah. that. If you guys would like to just say thank you and goodbye to Joe, that'd be wonderful. <clears throat> Thank, thank you. Thank you, Joe. So much, Joe. That was awesome. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Place I'd rather be. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. That's a little overwhelming. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>